Hey you and welcome, my name is Mike and in this old video we're going to talk about one Matthew Boynton and what happened to his wife Jessica Boynton. Cause it's one hell of a whodunno. As usual kinda, not really though. This occurred in the city of Griffin, Georgia in 2016. And what this story is really about is a small time police department cover up. Maybe, I guess I should uh, use my words carefully, but what happened to Jessica Boynton did not seem self-inflicted at all. And when your husband is part of the police department investigating a husband she was, you know, estranged from and having a difficult time with, well, what can you believe? All right, let's do this thing. Jessica Lester began dating Matthew Boynton when she was about 15, he was about 16. They were both in high school in Spalding County, Georgia. Matthew was one of those popular football player types and was the grandson of the county sheriff, Wendell Bean. Jessica, less popular, she was brought up by her grandparents since she was a baby, abandoned at the age of three. After they had been dating for about a year, Jessica announced to her grandparents she was up to duff. Prego! And, you know, her grandparents said, hey, you know, we'll, we'll help you raise the baby. You're kind of young. But nope, she and Matthew moved into an apartment together. Matthew dreamed of working with the law, becoming a cop. And, well, he fulfilled his dream, becoming a police officer with the Griffin Police Department. Now, as a cop, Matthew was reportedly, you know, one of those, um, a real company man type of guy, you know, fiercely loyal. Maybe someone who took his job a bit too seriously, at times. At the same time, he was very controlling of Jessica, even at Jessica Lester's family gatherings. He'd be like, all right, Jessica, your high school graduation. We've been here for, what, pff, 10 minutes? Time to hit the bricks, let's go. Christmas, same type of stuff. Jessica stayed at home, and although he was a cop, he drove a patrol car, he made sure to keep the keys of the truck so she couldn't go anywhere. She didn't have any kind of payment card, so he'd have to buy anything they needed. That sort of thing. Very controlling. Now, Jessica didn't exactly roll over and take this willingly. In fact, maybe she took it a bit too far. Twice, Matthew Boynton had to call the cops on her as she'd yell at him. She'd be poking him in the chest, which is, you know, domestic assault. Matthew took the law very seriously, and he knew how to use it. Rightly or wrongly, as we will see. A year after their first child, Jessica got pregnant again. This time, Matthew was not the baby daddy. She had had a brief affair. Though, Matthew said he would raise the child as his own. And they decided to get married. Jessica Lester became Jessica Boynton. And six months after that marriage, Jessica learned Matthew. He was off banging someone else. A dispatcher at the Spalding County Sheriff's Office named Courtney Calloway. And their marriage a bit shaky already, well this was the final nail in the coffin. Jessica would keep a notebook of when Matthew was out with his girlfriend, documenting everything, something she kept hidden from Matthew. In April 2016, Jessica was planning on moving out with the kids and had a job lined up. She was packed up and ready to rock. So, at about 9pm on Thursday, the 14th of April 2016, Matthew once again called the cops. To report domestic assault, Jessica was again poking at him, yelling at him, that kind of stuff. Jessica went over to the neighbor's house with the kids, and it seemed like things then calmed down for the night. They absolutely did not, as we will get to. Not long after, Matthew texts Jessica, saying, you know, we need to go to Walmart. Good old Walmart, get some Baba formula. They do so, popping in not long after 10pm, but around 30 minutes later, Jessica storms out of the place. Seems they were having a go at each other once again. Jessica was reportedly refusing to leave with him, but after a while, they all do so going back home. Now, this is when the shit hits the fan, my friends. It seems that after they arrived back home at around 10.45, a neighbour heard a wapow gunshot. Then, you know, being perturbed by hearing a gunshot, as it would be, the neighbor goes over to the window to have a goo. 
sees Matthew waltzing out of the apartment, not a care in the world, not a bother him. He was heading off for a late night dinner with another cop at the local Waffle House. A gunshot, ah, don't worry about it, be grand. However, at 12.54 a.m., he received a text message from Jessica. Or I guess I should say, uh, Jessica's phone. The text read, I can't do this anymore. Take care of the children. Please tell them I love them every day. I have been suffering for a while now and no one has noticed. Here lately, I have not been able to recognize the person I see in the mirror. This is not the first time I have had suicide thoughts. I love you and the boys. Hmm. Then, after getting that text and reading it, he texts his girlfriend, the dispatcher who just so happens to work with his granddaddy in the sheriff's office. Haha, ha, I'm sorry I didn't think about that lol. That was in response to a joke she had texted him earlier. He then called the emergency services, asking for them to pop by his home. Are you on EMS? Mm-hmm. Can you please dispatch your unit out to my uh, location? For me reference uh, to my wife. Um, I left the location. I'm, I'm back in around on Carver Road now. I'll be back there in about two minutes. Uh, she's having suicidal thoughts. My kids are at home with her, so I'm trying to hurry up and get back there. I'm driving. She just said that she's been experiencing suicidal thoughts right now. She told me to take care of the boys. So I'm trying to hurry up and get back home just to make sure that nothing's going to happen to them. Any weapons inside the house? Um, just my service weapon. He then immediately raced back to his apartment before the emergency services arrived. And again before anyone else has shown up, he reports on his police radio he heard pop pop two gunshots coming from his apartment. I believe I just heard a shot fired coming in my residence. I just came up the stairs two rounds. He quickly poked his head in, he said, before waiting outside for the police and emergency services to arrive. They then arrived. Stay out, Matt. Keep an eye on that way. It's crayon. Hey, open this. Police department! Police department! The older son was asleep in his room, the baby crying, and Jessica was locked in the bedroom closet, her head on a bloody pillow. On the shelf was her secret notebook documenting everything Matthew did, and under her was Matthew's service weapon. She used his gun. She used his gun. His police gun. Hey, can I get home? Yeah, but man, she's fucking loving. She loves me. She told me she loves me before she did it. Uh, yeah. What are my kids gonna do? She's gonna fall. Yeah. Fucking horrible. Yeah. She's got a damn it, man. I could have just fucking jumped. I mean, if, if I could have been here two minutes earlier, man, I could have jumped in front of the gun and tried to get it from her, man. Where did she shoot herself at? I couldn't tell. Oh, man. She would have never done this. I don't I don't know why. I mean, I, I was telling Guthrie, man, I was supposed to go eat with Guthrie. I got ready to leave, and I, I got ready to walk out the door and started walking down the steps. I didn't even get halfway. She asked me to come back, and she was crying. And she asked me, she said, well, can you can you call EMS? I said, okay, well, you know, what? what's wrong? And I asked her two or three times, and she just looked at me and just kept crying. I said, can you please tell me what's wrong? You know, I, I mean, are you having trouble breathing or, you know, w what is it? She said, never mind, don't worry about it. So, I mean, I, I left. I mean, this is, it, ask Guthrie, man, this is a common thing here lately. I mean, I got the Waffle House when I got the text. I circled back around, come back down uh, Highway 16 West, headed westbound, come back down through Carver. I was I was on the phone with uh, dispatcher Angie, man, to call EMS. Hmm. I hit Negative. I hit, I was hitting 90 coming down Carver trying to get in here, man. If I could, damn it, man. If I could have been here sooner, she, maybe I could have stopped her. 
About an hour later, Jessica's grandparents were woken up by police, sent by uh, Matthew's granddad, who, remember, was the sheriff. And they told Jessica's grandparents, who had raised her, that she was dead. She killed herself with a bullet to the brain. Now, this immediately did not ring true to them. She never really seemed like the depressive type. She loved her children more than anything. She was excited to, you know, to move out of Matthew's and her's apartment and start afresh. And she also knew fuck all about guns. And she hated guns. So they immediately rushed over. Now, Jessica wasn't dead. She was still alive and airlifted to Atlanta. She would be obviously in critical condition. So things are obviously a little sus, a little suspect. And they'll get even more so when we look into what exactly happened to Jessica Boynton. So here goes. There was no blood splatter on the walls of the closet, and there were two bullet holes on two different walls. You see the, uh, mm -mm. the holes? Mm -mm. No, I mean, of course you. Oh, yeah. oh right there? Yeah. Come out here. Remember, one neighbor only heard a single gunshot before Matthew reported in. Hours before he reported in. About 10.45, I thought I heard a gunshot. We heard we, something, we, and I said, what was that? Yeah, it sounded like a gunshot. Just one, one shot? That's all we heard, but other people said they heard another one later on the night. And a total of four people heard a gunshot two hours before the police arrived. No one else heard the two gunshots when Matthew allegedly did. I believe I just heard a shot fire coming in my residence. I just came up the stairs two rounds, be a positive a smoke gun smoke, and I can't get an answer to the door. Stay outside. Ten four. What about the text message? How did that get sent to Matthew's phone if the neighbors heard a gunshot earlier? Well, there was no lock on her phone. People would later say the way it was written was not like anything Jessica would say, or how she would just use her words. But other than that, we don't know. Unless it happened like Matthew said it happened and she did send it. But there's more to it than that. Matthew's phone also showed that seconds after calling emergency services to report the shots fired call coming from his apartment, he texted his girlfriend again, saying, give me a few to text back. Long story, I'll tell you later. Matthew's phone was also photographed beside the microwave when the investigators arrived, documenting evidence. Now, later, when a local reporter named Sheila Matthews noticed this, she called the Georgia Bureau of Investigations to say, well, he must have been texting his girlfriend and called the emergency services from inside the apartment, not outside as he said. Remember, he said he didn't know what was going on. He poked his head in and then waited outside. He thought there could be an active shooter inside the apartment and was too scared to go in. So how did his phone get there? Well, this is when things obviously get even more suspect because the Georgia Bureau of Investigations would say, no, his phone was outside. It, the picture you're looking at, the evidence picture where it's inside the apartment, Matthew gave it to somebody and they just put it there randomly to, to photograph it. But it was never inside the apartment. Somebody just left it there, took a picture of it, and that was that. This activity on his cell phone had to have taken place inside the kitchen in his apartment. Uh, how do you come to that conclusion? Because if you go to the photographs that are part of your investigative case file, there's a photograph and also the um, the evidence report for his cell phone. Mm -hmm. It was retrieved from the kitchen counter in front of the microwave oven. No, it wasn't. It was actually from, from him. We put it on the counter to take a picture of it. Which is a lie. Come on, guys. We have body cam footage, which shows... Matthew's phone inside the apartment when he said he never really went in. So therefore, he must have called emergency services, texted his girlfriend from inside the apartment. This is absolutely ridiculous. That very early morning after Jessica was rushed to hospital, Matthew was interviewed by the Georgia Bureau of Investigations. I'm sure as you've heard, I'm getting a divorce. I, I was. Here recently, she did confirm that the second baby's not mine. Since you, things weren't working out with your wife, did you have a girlfriend or anything? Or I had a, I had a friend that was a girl, mm. or is a girl. After you got on the radio and you were outside communicating on the radio, you never went back in to actually just check on the kids for your safety. You're thinking she could still be... I, I didn't, you didn't know, know, where I didn't she know was. if I was dealing with a possible active scenario where she still had the gun mm -hmm. and she had shot Tyler. The clothes you have on now was the clothes you were wearing tonight? Yes. I didn't try to brush off anything. I didn't try to wash my hands. Nothing's I won't, you know, I know GSR and all that would be involved. He said he was wearing the same clothes the entire night, which is disproven by the body cam footage and Walmart footage. 
Jessica would be placed in a medically induced coma for three weeks. She'd make a full recovery, but with no memory of what happened that night. And with the text, you know, sent from her phone, the, the, I'm, I'm done, that text, um, her DNA found on Matthew's service weapon. All right, another job, job well done, lads. It was self-inflicted. Case closed. And even when the GBI, Georgia Bureau Investigations, closed the case, they described it as she killed herself. She never killed herself, which is just a weird thing to say. But again, there's more discrepancies when the doctors in Atlanta were examining her. First of all, the wound was at the top of her head, in which she would have had been aiming the gun down. This was described by a doctor as a very unusual direction in which to point the gun at oneself with the intention of committing suicide. Yes, this is very comfortable. They also straight up said the injury did not fit with that description. Neither of her hands had any evidence of any gunpowder stippling. Matthew's hands and clothing were never tested, by the way. In fact, one of the doctors would later say it seems more like someone else did this, not self-inflicted, and overall it seemed pretty suspicious. But oh yeah, her husband is a police officer in the Griffin Police Department, and his granddad is the sheriff of the county Griffin is located in, so that makes sense. They didn't even find a bullet hole in her head. They determined it was more likely the result of blunt force trauma. But the investigator said it was a gun, and never looked for an object or whatever that could be used to hit her. Matthew and the kids moved in with his girlfriend after the incident, and he was placed on administrative leave. And a few weeks later, he was back on the beat, before the investigation was even closed. I mean, come on guys, seems pretty obvious what happened. Matthew was also given full custody of the kids due to Jessica shooting herself. Jessica was eventually released from hospital, having made a full recovery, and after being assessed by psychologists, they found no evidence of depression or suicidal thoughts. And three days later, she was served with a family violence protective order. Jessica could not come within 300 yards of Matthew or her children, and so the case was closed. And this wouldn't be the first time there was a cover-up within the greater, we'll say it's just Spalding County. Police services within Spalding County. Remember, Matthew Boynton worked with the Griffin Police Department. His granddaddy, Wendell Beam, was the sheriff of Spalding County that Griffin was located in. So you'd think there'd probably be some links between the two sheriff's office and the police department. There are allegations of a cover-up involving a sex scandal investigation that was clearly embarrassing to the Spalding County Sheriff's Department. Sheriff Wendell Beam tells the Fox 5 I team he didn't try to hide anything or ignore complaints about a top deputy's outrageous behavior. Fox 5 I team reporter Randy Travis says there are questions about who tried to stop the report from going public. Randy? That's right, Lisa and Russ. This all started with former Captain David Gibson, now under indictment for multiple sex charges involving female sheriff's office personnel. Why are you so interested in this issue? I, I just don't like people lying to me. Will Sanders is a Griffin truck driver, son of a former state lawmaker, and pain in the side of the Spalding County Sheriff's Department. Do you think the sheriff knew about this and didn't do anything about it? Absolutely. Sanders is talking about a sex scandal that is still shaking this community. Longtime Sheriff's Department Captain David Gibson was indicted earlier this month on multiple sex and battery charges, including forcing a female deputy to watch him perform a sex act. The criminal case stems from this internal affairs investigation conducted by an outside agency. It was closed earlier this summer. And so this was the only thing that was in his file? Yes. But when Sanders tried to get a copy of the investigative file under the Open Records Act, the sheriff's secretary, Ruby King, sued to block him. And that's the case of what happened to Jessica. We may never know what really happened. Only two people do know, and one of them can't remember because she got either shot in the head or whacked over the head, but almost died. The notebook she was, you know, writing to document everything Matthew was doing, it was found in the closet beside her, and a few pages were ripped out. So we've even less to go on. So who knows what really happened. But after what happened happened, two more things happened. One was that Matthew was arrested. Just not for attempted murder. Seven months after the shooting, Jessica filed a report with the Griffin Police Department that Matthew hadn't returned her belongings. 
and that she was missing things including a retainer. Matthew was now dating a new woman, and this new woman found a gym bag in their house full of women's items. Clothing, jewellery, laptop, and a retainer with Jessica written on it. Matthew had already signed a sworn statement promising he no longer had anything of Jessica's. This gym bag would eventually make its way to the police department via a man named Will Sanders. You might remember him from the sex scandal cover-up. He was a local truck driver and who freelanced as an investigator. He took an interest in the Jessica Boynton case. Matthew's new girlfriend told Will Sanders she had Jessica's bag and he was the one who brought it to the police. I'm sure he's not going to be a happy camper when he finds out that bag's missing. Because that right here is about, what, five felonies? <laughs> well, it, I mean, I ain't a rocket scientist. I ain't a lawyer. Well, let me tell you, truck driver. Well, the police were so thankful to have Will Sanders in their community. You know, a do-gooder, freelance, you know, private investigator, whatever you want to call it. They were so thankful he had solved what happened to Jessica's missing items that they um, got a search warrant for his Facebook profile where he did a lot of his investigating, contacting people and so forth, and threatened to release it to anybody who wanted it, and also tried to link him to two separate burglaries. The police told him his private Facebook messages would be made accessible to any persons interested in the entire scope of your actions, activities, motives, and history. Will then deleted his Facebook account after he learned of this. Matthew would be interrogated. So Jessica came in, she filed a report. Um, okay. I talked to you about it. Uh, you wrote a statement saying you didn't have any of her items. Uh, right. The report specifically said her retainer and stuff like that and clothes. Okay. Um, do you know anything about where her clothes or retainer might have been? Now, like I told her before, the only thing that we might have had would have been in that white trailer, and my stepdad has not mentioned anything else being in there. Do you recognize that bag? Yes, that bag that Jessica let me use to put all my gym stuff in when we used to be together. Okay. All right, Matthew. Look. Let's see. Let's see the photo. Let's see the photo. Yes, sir. The bag was completely filled with female clothes. And this is one photo of it. That's not yours. No. No. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. That's not yours. No, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. Who does that belong to? This guy, Jessica's name. I want to be Jessica's retainer thing. <sighs> if it was in that, if it was in this right here, where would that have been at? I had all of her stuff in it in line. What would it have been at? It would have been in my the garage thing like I'd sit in. Which is where? Which is at my house. Which is at your house? Yes, sir. And the contents in the bag? And it's got all of her stuff in it. So why would you not have brought that to us when you noticed, when you saw the bag at moving? Sarge, I promise I've not been through that bag. The last time I used Matthew, that bag I was for the gym. I didn't ask you that, Matthew. Listen to me, buddy. Who's your house is? I understand what you're saying, Miss Jessica. I'm not sure brought it up here. You know, Next all time. things, and I don't know anything about your other issue, but all things involved in reference to this case, all the going around, the statement that you wrote, you're a police officer, Matthew. You know we are held to a higher standard than anybody else. I understand. You know, people don't 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 expect us to make mistakes, and they don't realize we're human. I understand that. Yes, you sir. understand that. Matthew would resign before he was fired, and would not be indicted on the charges of making false statements and violating his oath of office. And four months later, he got a job with another department. The second thing to happen was that Jessica got her kids back. During the summer of 2018, when Matthew would arrive to pick them up, the older one would often cling to Jessica, saying he didn't want to go. He later told her that Matthew hurt him. After Jessica reported this to Child Protective Services and an investigation was done, the children were interviewed by child psychologists, they recommended that the children not be around Matthew anymore. Matthew has since challenged the ruling. However, what happened to Jessica that night remains a mystery.
sorta. The Sheriff of Spalding County, Wendell B. Matthews Grandad, uh, he was eventually voted out of office in 2017, and when the new sheriff arrived, he opened the door to the office and found nine industrial-sized trash bags filled with shredded paper. So I guess that tells you what you need to know. Jessica is still trying to um, reopen the investigation into what happened to her that night. Hopefully she will. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I will see you, as always, real soon in the next video. Take care of yourselves. Mike out.